Something I used to love doing as a little boy was going to the seaside and you'd climb across the rocks, you'd see rock pools and I don't know if you've ever seen these little um, sea creatures called limpets. They have shells which are sort of pyramid shape and they just kind of sit there on the rocks. And um, as a young boy, one of my challenges was to, to get them off the rock. Now, there's a strategy to it. If you've ever tried to get a limpet off the rock, you'll know. Um, you've got to do it in one go because if you give it a little nudge, suddenly it suckers tight onto the rock and it doesn't matter how much you try after that, that little sea creature is sticking to that rock. It's, it's a way of defending themselves from birds, right? So an inquisitive child comes along to try and get the limpet off and you just knock it before you try and pull it properly and it just clings on. And it can be like this with us. There are things that we hold on to in life and when we start to realise we don't want those things in life and we start to try and break free of them, it's almost like they cling on to us. It's like we think we're holding on to the thing, but it actually holds on to us. It's like, and the more we, we struggle to, to free ourselves, the tighter the hold, a bit like trying to get a limpet off the rock. Um, and I think this is illustrated beautifully in the Bible when Moses is called to lead the Israelites out of slavery. And Moses goes to Pharaoh and he says, release the Israelites and, and the um, Israelites are, are enslaved already there. They're doing hard manual labor and Pharaoh gets angry that Moses has the indignation, the cheek to ask to release the Israelites. He says, no, in fact, I'm gonna up their workload. They're gonna have to work even harder. He tries to break them. He tries to crush them. The very thing that's enslaving them has a tighter hold the more there's this talk of them being free, this idea of freedom. Um, and eventually, um, as God sends these plagues, Pharaoh gives up. He can't fight against God. And Pharaoh says, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to release you. You can go, just get out of here. Um, and the Israelites leave Egypt, they leave their slavery. Um, and then Pharaoh pursues them for their lives. And there's a, a model here. Think about what we're, what we're saying. At first, they're enslaved, they're being held in, in their place. When Moses comes to try and lead them out of slavery, Pharaoh ups their workload, things get more difficult, it fights back. And eventually, when they're released, Pharaoh comes to their life. The closer they get to their freedom, the harder the fight gets, the more perilous, the higher the stakes, the more the very thing that's enslaving them fights back and holds on to them. And it can be like this with us spiritually. We live in these lives of um, slavery, but sometimes we don't even know we're enslaved by the things that are holding on to us. But as we begin to identify that, as we begin to try and move free, as we begin to try and break away from the rock that's holding us, it begins to squeeze, things, things get tight, things are held onto more tightly. The things that enslave us fight back. And it can be like this. It might be that um, we're enslaved to a pattern of thinking. We're enslaved to fears. We're enslaved to sinful, habitual choices and behaviours and lifestyles, things that just hold on to us. And actually, if we don't identify it as slavery, we can be quite comfortable. Life can seem okay. But when we begin to, to try and break free, when we begin to try and move out of that pattern of slavery, break away from the thing that's holding us, it fights back and the stakes increase and things get more difficult. So this is an encouragement for you. If there's something that you're trying to free yourself from, a, a lifestyle, a pattern of thinking, um, fears or whatever it is, things that enslave you, and you're experiencing the struggle, you're experiencing the more I try and free myself, the harder this fight gets, you're not alone. This is a pattern um, and ultimately there is freedom. The Bible encourages us this way. It says, live by the spirit and put to death the misdeeds of your flesh we can find true freedom when we live in the spirit we stop fighting we stop resisting and we just give in and we surrender and we live by the spirit i'm still trying to work out what this means i still feel like there's so many areas of slavery like that trap me in my own ways of thinking my own behaviors in my own life things that i feel totally like beyond my control beyond help beyond being free but god is good he's faithful to deliver us god is good at delivering people from slavery and we can see that through the bible again and again and again this model of god freeing people we just need to surrender to him trust him and journey with him it doesn't mean it's going to be an easy journey the israelites found themselves wandering in a the desert they found themselves 
confused. They found themselves at time wishing they were back in that place of slavery. The allure of slavery tried to invite them back. It wasn't an easy journey, but it was worthwhile because God had the long-term vision, the long-term plan for them, and he has that for us too. So Father, I just pray whatever bondage we're in, whatever chains, whatever enslaves us, there's no chain too strong that you cannot break it. There's no slavery too powerful that it can keep a hold of us when we surrender ourselves to your hands. Help us to live by the Spirit. Help us to put to death um, the misdeeds of our flesh and our mind, um, sinful desires, sinful habits, sinful patterns of thinking. Help us to be truly free. The Bible says this, it was for, it was for freedom that Christ set us free. It's possible to be freed by Christ but not live in that freedom. So I want to encourage us today to step out into that freedom because it was for freedom that Christ set us free. Amen. God bless you guys. I will see you soon. Bye for now.